Hello, and welcome to Normal World. I'm Dave Landau. I'm Quarter Black Garrett, and there's Angela. Hi. What's up? What's up? How are you? <laughs> you don't it? care. Let's move on. We got some we good guests today. We care. We do have a lot of guests today. Joining us today, you can see him this weekend in Dallas at the House of Comedy, as well as next weekend at the Laugh Shop in Calgary. Please welcome Ryan Long. Debut appearance in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Right. I would like to know how she's doing, though, if we could Aww. continue on that. Dan. Don't do that. Sweet. My Don't head do hurts that. a little <laughs> from earlier. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that sounds bad, but okay. Oh, from the name calling? <laughs> <laughs> from Ryan hitting me in the head for a sketch over and over. Every time I do a character with a girl, I'm always just like, I honestly think it just comedically it would work if I smacked you. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> You're like, I think I can make this funny. You're You're like, so there's not even a camera. I've been doing comedy a long time, and <laughs> <laughs> if your nose was bleeding, and no, yeah. we can't use fake. We have to. I like slapstick. It's, it's punch yeah. stick. Yeah. It needs so, to be yeah. visceral. <laughs> Also joining us today, he is a producer of The Kumia Show on Compound Media, as well as Garrett and Steve. Please welcome Garrett Andritz. <laughs> What's up, Dave? How are you, my yeah, friend? Another Garrett. Good to see you, finally. Oh. Yeah, you don't get that. You don't get a lot of Garretts. No, these days. we're rare. No, you, you are rare. Yeah. You're a rare breed. And me, because we do plugs in the beginning, I'm just going to do that because, you know, daddy's got to make money too. <laughs> uh, you can see me at Hyenas in Fort Worth, March 15th and 16th and April 6th, the Village Theater in Canton, Michigan. And check out my special on Comedy Genius, G-E-N-I dot U-S, 50% off with code Dave Landau. All right. Now we're getting to this first story right here. I think it's an important one. As soon as I find the thing... <laughs> it's we're right there on the, the on the second on the second the second page. No, it's the third. It's the third page. <laughs> How the fuck do I do this every time? Comics canceled. Thank you. You Seattle. There we go. Not Dave only Smith, my show. <laughs> Luis J. Gomez okay, and Jim Florentine, uh, Kurt Metzger as well, friend of the show, uh, all got canceled uh, because uh, it's Seattle. From the Seattle uh, Comedy Club, please welcome to talk about it, Mr. Jim Florentine. Too hot for Chaz. Oh, <laughs> yeah. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. How about you? Oh, I can't complain. I, uh, I, I don't have to play Seattle either, so I'm doing all right. Yeah, well, I thought I was going to play Seattle until all of a sudden I wasn't. I thought I was finally back. I'm like, all right, I got booked in Seattle. I haven't been there in about five years ago. Maybe times have changed. Obviously not. Yeah, Garrett here was actually in where you would be performing when it was yeah. a different country and called Chaz. It's yeah. a terrible location where you were going to be going. It's horrible. Yeah, I didn't know I was going to a war zone. I didn't know it was that area. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, <laughs> I saw Tommy, your your manager, last weekend, too, at his club. And uh, he told me about it. He's like, yeah, we canceled. they canceled Dave Smith, Louis J. Gomez, Jim Florentine, and Kurt Metzger. I'm like, yeah, the four people you don't want to cancel. <laughs> like, of all the people you're going to do that to, it's not the ones you want to pick. What was the reason that she gave you in the email? It was about, you know, our area is very progressive values and they're, you know, basically their comedy doesn't line up with our standards. And we check with the community leaders and other comics and, and around the neighborhood and they just don't uh, align with our values here. But I talked to the support free speech. We love we support free speech and the artistic freedom for comedy, and we love to work with these guys sometime in the future. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> right. How is it? Who who's the community leaders? It's still. I, the, I personally talked to some of the community leaders yeah. uh, before I did this show, and they also said they didn't like Jim. That's a that, <laughs> the first thing they said, and they said specifically your seven minute closer about how there's two genders was a no for them. <laughs> <laughs> and I was gonna open with that. I wasn't gonna close with that. Is Start the community, with your closer. Is the community leader still the rapper that was renting out the Airbnb? <laughs> Handing out AKs and stuff, yeah. <laughs> neighborhood children during the war zone. Just wanted to know. Is this the first time you've been canceled where they've been as honest to just say, look, it's it's because we don't agree with your act? Because usually they just lie and say it's something else. Because sure. that's how you get out of a problem. Like, this person's so new to booking, they were like, it's because of you. Uh, the comedian James said no. Yeah. <laughs> like, how stupid yeah, no, is that? This is hey, the first time. I just want to come you, out. You, I just want to come out. You can tell your agent, hey, listen, uh, you know, we're booked up through a whole year. No, we're going to pass. So you don't even, it's not even on your radar. You know, this is the first time I actually got booked. And two, the tickets were all on sale for two weeks. 
And then they go, nah, we can't have these guys. I heard it was the local Seattle comics bitching. That's what I'm hearing from other Seattle comics, that they were crying at us for coming at a club. So maybe that had something to do with it. Oh, it is. I heard from a friend of mine who uh, is out there that it was the local like Seattle open micers that were going to the show because they're going to keep your club open. <laughs> Do you know how many drinks they buy a night? Yeah, I mean, easily none. <laughs> yeah, they're the ones that are definitely going to keep your club uh, alive because they support the local scene, which is they come and get stage time. Yeah. Nothing is more valuable than you giving them stage time. That's going to keep your doors. You don't understand. It makes them feel uncomfortable. Dude, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So you posted the email. Do we have it? We do. After careful consideration and discussions with our team, investors, local comedians, and neighborhood advocacy groups, we've encountered a challenging situation that requires us to revisit the planned shows. Capitol Hill is known for its progressive values, and we've received significant feedback expressing concerns about the alignment of these upcoming shows with the neighborhood's ethos. This feedback includes concerns from local advocacy groups that are deeply embedded in our community and work towards upholding its values. More gobbledygook like that. Yeah. Jim, I have to be honest. Your act would not work in a room where they use the term neighborhood ethos. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know what ethos means. I don't either. I just know I don't like it. <laughs> it's aesthetic ethos. Have you guys thought about just going in all four and getting a theater across the street? No, what happened was as soon as you know this went down, they, you get in, in contact with all these venues that want to book you. So the, the Tacoma Comedy Club, which is 20 minutes away from this club, goes, we'll honor your weekend. So I got booked there that weekend, 20 minutes away. Yeah. So I guess my material's offensive in that part of Seattle, but 20 minutes away, it's fine. <laughs> oh, dude, Adams Club is great. You're going to love it. Yeah, downtown Seattle, absolutely. They're going to freak out. Yeah, it's, it kind of makes sense, but the Tacoma Comedy Club's fantastic. You just got yourself put so into a but there's far less tents, way less human feces on yeah, the ground, less people jacking off. It's not the best area, the Tacoma Comedy Club. No, I agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, sixth and Proctor's a little nicer, but you still. Like, I don't know if I'd have the Queen go down that street. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd, I'd want any woman I know to walk down there during the day, but it's still uh, it's a nice it's a nice venue. It's a lot better. It, you won't get as many protesters. I'll say that. Well, it's up a hill, right? They don't like to walk up the hills. Yeah, no, the there's way. no way. That one's, at a, that one's at the top of a big hill, which <laughs> involves a lot of work. The bottom of that hill, a <laughs> lot of protests. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely going to be at least half a block down yelling shit up a hill. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim, I appreciate you calling in. I don't want to hold you up all day, but where can we find you? Uh, just my website, jimflorentine.com. All my tour dates are up there. And I'll be in Dallas April 27, 28 at the Hyenas in Dallas. Dude, come on the nice. show, please. I will. I'll come in, in town a day early. I'll talk to you. Awesome, man. We'd love to have you in the sketch and stuff, dude. It'd be yes. great to have you in. Yeah. All right, my friend. Yep. Take it easy. And I'm glad you got that rebooked by a good dude. Later, buddy. Thanks. See you. See you, Garrett. See you, Ryan. Yep. Later. One last question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We forgot the bit. It is funny. He's the guy that played special ed on Crank Anchors. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, there's just no way that's going to fly in Seattle. No. <laughs> like, I'm not Seattle necessarily. I mean, it will. There's it, people there who'll like funny stuff. It's just, it's it's open micers ruining a show. Was that, were they all on one show? Yeah. Oh, no, no. It was four different shows. It was four different weeks booked and they they canceled, they called them. So they singled the, out those four guys? Yes, they kind of yes, just said everyone yeah. from New York's cut. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder... Wow, it's, it's good. East Coast, West Coast beef. Is it's, that Seth Simon's guy out there? Is that why? I don't know. I don't even know who that is. He's the one that tried to take Shane down, and then oh, the bird call really? guy. Yeah, yeah, really? the bird poetry. Oh, guy. he's oh. got to feel good about how that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> you shot you the know? man into superstardom. <laughs> oh, good job, dude. You got him. Like he went from <laughs> he went from being a featured player to hosting the show. That's what a <laughs> shitty job you did canceling. <laughs> You ever see his Patreon? God, the amount of money Ooh. he makes per month is insane. Oh, God. Shane, uh, help me. All right. <laughs> Toronto yeah. sex hole. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Ready? You're from Canada. I don't know if you've been. From Toronto? <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I like Toronto. I'm going to say it. It's always, it's always been a nice place. Never been. I like it's it. The best city in the world. I enjoy it. On Tucson, I enjoy their sex holes. <laughs> well, this, I guess... 
if you were going to say it, but what happened was these guys did a glory haul and they thought it was a girl and apparently it's a guy at the other end. And I just want to say the one that I did, I'm pretty sure was a girl. So yeah. that was a different yeah. thing. I got to say, did you I, pull the sheet down? I didn't check, but I'm assuming this was a different one than the one I went to, which is for sure a chick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure in the history of glory holes, it's never been a woman, but good luck. <laughs> It's like scientifically proven, I think, at this yeah. point. Unless they're filming it, it's definitely a guy. Well, you know. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? After the guy walks out, he goes, I'm a guy. You go, Dude, don't tell me. Right. <laughs> well, the whole thing is like, we're playing pretend. He was wearing a wig. I don't know yeah. what you guys ever brought I, Well, yeah. Was, was the guy wearing a wig? Yeah. There's, look, sometimes your balls will hit stubble <laughs> and you just oh. pretend you didn't feel it. <laughs> You're just like, that was probably just a tennis ball. So, but in Toronto, yeah, on, on two separate occasions in 2020, 33-year-old Tony Sphere tricked men into believing they were talking to women online. The two victims believed. I love that part because it says the two victims, just two. Yeah, just, the two. <laughs> just the two of them. Just the two, <laughs> just the two that have come forward so far. Guys. Yeah, there's no way that this she was <laughs> She was running this for two years, but just two guys. <laughs> yeah, not the other 400 that saw the story. <laughs> like, oh, shit. <laughs> This is not even uh, just a two victims. <laughs> this has happened before. Uh, the other one turned out horrible. They arrested this guy. Uh, he's going to be a sex offender now. Uh, and it happened before with two guys, and they found out, and they returned and uh, beat the guy to death. They beat him to death. Yeah, not in this story. But not in this no. story. A similar story. Almost exactly. He went back the to the got, got the gang back together to go storm the glory. Yes. Hall. Yeah. How would yes. you even tell your boys? Yeah, how, yeah. Do you bro, how do you broach the subject? <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta need you to get the gang together to go beat someone up. You go. What do you do to you guys? Don't worry about what he did to me. <laughs> Don't ask, man. Yeah. It's like that scene out of what, uh, the, the the town with Ben Affleck. Like we're gonna go <laughs> kill this guy. Don't ever ask me what it's about. <laughs> you never learn about it. Like, is it the glory hole thing? Like, oh, don't ask me about it. Don't even know what that is. Look, I don't even know what you're talking about. It's a, <laughs> it doesn't undo the gay sex you had. <laughs> Your friends are still going to make fun of you, except now you're just in prison having more gay sex. It is a vicious cycle. <laughs> What's the crime, actually, though? Right. Because uh, he put his butthole up to the... Okay, so the guy... Was, <laughs> they were sticking their dicks through the that's hole. That's the crime, And he Garrett. plopped his butt onto their dick. So he essentially <laughs> raped them with his butt. Wow, like, false pretense. That's the craziest. <laughs> that is actually rape. what happened. Who's the who's the, I think he's the victim because he no. knows. They my all dick. know. I think that if you're putting your penis into a hole at random, you get what you get. I honestly yeah. do think you get what you get. That should be the statue. You get what you get, yeah. love. Yeah, it's like, like you I'm knew sorry. what you were buying. It's a hole in the wall, sir. <laughs> Roe versus Dave. Yeah. You get what you get. Not even a wall, just a sheet. Yeah, like you can obviously sheet. see the silhouette behind right. it. I <laughs> hope there was a light behind, so yeah. it's very silhouetted. There's a, there's a wig. Yeah. You're clearly holding onto a man's shoulders. <laughs> They're hairy. You can just hear him breathing, yeah. his man breath behind yeah. the sheet. The entire yeah. apartment's just filled with, like, football trophies. <laughs> <laughs> You're telling me that was a that was a man's beard? That's honest. This woman's apartment has a lot of pictures of a guy holding fish. <laughs> Interesting. They claimed that their name was Angela, too. I just want to point that out. It's not in the little notes, but... Interesting. Oh, I did my own research. information here? <laughs> yeah. oh. I just find this so odd. Be pertinent. Oh, man. Well, good for them. I mean, yeah. If you got to think of a girl's like, yeah, just come over right now. I'll just be behind the hole. You go, all right. I'll be like, <laughs> yeah. the levels of suspicion. Yeah. It's just the fact that you're horribly addicted to sex and you're like, okay, it's, like, it's just, it's come to this. I could see them getting certain guys after like 12 beers. You know what I mean? I think that's potentially what happens. Oh, for sure. You get the right guy and super drunk, and he's just like, fuck, I'm on fire tonight, dude. Yeah, yeah I can't and help. They went, they went together. <laughs> like, as a, a yeah, duo? They went as a duo. You're like, all right, I take buddies. first. Rock, paper, scissors, who gets first? And neither one of them were like, you know, I think this might be a fella. <laughs> and they had their dicks in at the same time. Well, well I think the second guy gave out that part, though. The second guy did, right? Because he went up to the sheet and pulled it down. <laughs> yeah. so it was like, wait, who, who's behind there? The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, the, <laughs> the guy who's dressed as a ghost. Might be. <laughs> wait a second. There's something fishy going on here. Wait a second. This it's is a man. I think I solved this mystery. Um, the 388 other satisfied customers did not complain. <laughs> and he <laughs> still got four and a half stars. Yeah. Good Yelp. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't I've never been to a glory hole. I got to be honest. Uh, I think that's uh, not true. Reese's. That's oh, true. I did do the Reese's ad. That oh, that's true. That was the first sketch go. we ever did. I dressed as a cowboy and went to a glory hole. Yeah, but I feel like <laughs> it, it needs no to wrong be, way to eat a Reese's. <laughs> it needs to be on a hard wall so you could like brace yourself up against it. I've never There's understood a sheet. You you yeah, fall the, right through it. All, you know, it sounds like it's coming from experience though, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's not hard enough, and you know, you hurt your you throw your back out. Yeah. <laughs> I can't balance like this. <laughs> I need. Then you purchase. get in a fight with the manager. Now you're banned from the glory hole for a week and a half. It can't be a makeshift <laughs> wall. It can't even be an abandoned restaurant. I bet you the second guy just tripped and pulled the sheet down by accident. Yeah. He didn't even want to do it. I mean, was he wearing the sheet or was it up in clothes? <laughs> Lines. I think it was, it was up on a line. It's got to be up on a line. Oh, it was right? up on a clothesline. Yeah. yeah. They okay. walk into the door, and then immediately there was a sheet up right there. <laughs> I've done a lot of research about like this. Have you? <laughs> yes. Like a Spider-Man sheet? Yeah. So, what the heck? <laughs> okay. It's their fault. Yeah. I don't. So he's getting 28... He's actually getting charged? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 28 he, months. 28 months in prison. Yeah. 14 months for each count. Why would he mind? <laughs> Actually, that's you gotta, that is crazy to be the guy that goes and testifies. Like, I'd, I'd be more likely to testify against John Gotti than do that. Oh, for sure. Because <laughs> you're like, I thought it was a chick. You're on the stand. Like, I thought <laughs> yeah, you were yeah. a girl. <laughs> I'm not pressing charges. I'm good. Yeah. The warden goes into his cell, rips down the poster, and is a glory hole <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dug behind it. Just, <laughs> I'm going to need a rock hammer. <laughs> Jury has their verdict. Yeah. You're gay. <laughs> <laughs> He only uh, he only goes out to the yard once to get the fucking to get the salt or the, the rock out of his pant leg. I'm still not sure of the crime though. Like they went for a blow, yeah, but they yeah. got more than they asked for. Well, they went for a crime? chick and they got a dude. I think that's it. No, I think it's so, yeah, like it's fraud. False, it's well, false pretenses. Oh, all right. It's a mean case of fraud. So, yeah. so, so you heard him on the phone talking to you, right? You didn't think that was a guy? No. like <laughs> You're sort of saying that, okay, well, if that's a crime, then what if a girl says she's a 10 and she's a 6? Yeah, that's a you good point, You know what? You too. have a point there. That's a lot of crimes going on in this world. <laughs> Show up, she's got a hair lip. Yeah. That's... <laughs> No. I'm just asking questions. Like a literal hair. <laughs> yeah, we're just trying to get the a logistics hairy down. Yeah, she has that thing. The, the, oh, yeah. <laughs> for where you put in a quarter to fix it. <laughs> I forget what they're called. What are those things? Cleft lip? Cleft palate. Yeah. yeah, that. But everything else is good. Did they fix that? Because I feel like I don't see that anymore. I think they fix cleft palates. I think they do it when right when you're born are now. Born. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then it's, yeah, it just kind of looks like you have a little scar now. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I had friends in in middle school that had it. And then, you know, then they fixed it. You never made fun of them, right? No, never. never. <laughs> Why would you do that? Well, that's horrible. Kids are always nice to other kids. <laughs> Why would that happen? <laughs> Only fan saves a home. Mm. It's happened a lot. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Women making money. Soprano star Adrea Matteo, D. Matteo. She played the uh, boy girlfriend of uh, Christopher. Christopher. Son. Thank you. By the way, I'm sort of suspicious of this story. I, I feel like this girl actually has a sponsorship with OnlyFans. I've never seen anyone do more promo. Mm. I guess the Occam's Razor could just be that, okay, she's promoting her OnlyFans by doing all this. But the amount that she's been out there being like, you do not understand every woman should be on OnlyFans. There's benefits. A, drop out of college right now. This is the move. It does feel like she's in cahoots with the <laughs> with the investors. She has to be then. You know Rachel Dolezal? Yeah. Rachel Dolezal, she yeah, yeah. Only OnlyFans as well. Hers wasn't working out good, though, because she had to change her name and get a job as a teacher. That's right. Yep. And then she got kicked out of that, too. Yeah, Which I, that I thought she was crushing it on Cameo, and I thought, literally, I was watching that being like, <laughs> Rachel Dolezal's a billionaire. Yeah, you'd think she'd be well <laughs> off. Now she's a supply teacher and getting fired. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, once she took her clothes off, people were like, no, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, I want to back you up there because it's not that bad. I said the same thing. I was like, hey, good for her. I wouldn't. You know? Hey, I don't know. the what, One picture we saw, maybe. It's yeah. not as bad as you think, buddy. She had sturdy calves. Yeah. Isn't she great. works out. She works out. For like a 45, I don't know how old she is, pushing 50 probably. Just copy. Wasn't that she bad. Was 22. And she was putting it out there. If you've seen the leaks or if you subscribe, such as myself. <laughs> if you're a follower. <laughs> you just type her name into Google. Dude, it's all yeah, the yeah. things. She's got her legs behind her head. She's really? showing, oh, showing man. her I feet, everything. Before. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll have to subscribe and get back to you. <laughs> well, it wasn't working out for her is the point. <laughs> 
I was like, she must be so fucking rich. <laughs> it is amazing that women can just do that. Like not that unfair. Not, not that you want to, but I mean, it does seem like I can't just go home and just start. You can, but it has a ball to be gay. out. Yeah, it has yeah. to be real gay. It has I to be for dudes. Also, I also look like this. Um, there might be a market. Yeah, there, I don't know. There's, a, there's a niche. There's is a, there a short, fat William Shatner-looking guy? <laughs> yeah, you could just rub your belly. <laughs> no, you have to. You have to make it like an animal yeah, name. You're like, no, I'm a beaver. Like, you know, you need really? to. Yeah. I'm just yeah. pouring chocolate sauce in my name. <laughs> like a, a cub. You'd yeah, be a cub. I could be a cub. Like, I'm a chipmunk. I How much money are we talking? Cheeks. The gay community, whatever you are, you just need to find an animal that sort of looks like that, and then okay. you're cooking. Yeah, you, you know can. what? I'm gonna have to take a gander. <laughs> <laughs> but the Sopranos star every yeah we, we should get back to that every yeah, hour and a half this girl's doing a new press tour about how everyone should drop everything and join OnlyFans tomorrow <laughs> it's amazing yeah uh, yeah Sopranos star Dre Mate yeah said when her family hit hard times OnlyFans subscribers yeah. helped pay their bills yeah Dre revealed this week in an interview that with the Daily Mail that she launched the online account in August 2023 because her house was going into foreclosure charging fifteen dollars a month she says she had enough money to save her home from foreclosure within five minutes of starting her it own almost business. feels like Why? someone told her she wouldn't make money and now she's like doing this to her to tell everyone like i'm telling you it worked i actually did make money yeah she's, like, I'm she's trying to prove someone wrong here yeah, it's like in five minutes i got my house back in 10 minutes i got two houses back <laughs> <laughs> i'd like to know what the house costs but yeah it yes is i guess if you're super famous you can go Finger yourself for money. I guess well, yeah. that's the moral of the story. And that's really all that matters. <laughs> but in a matter of five minutes, though, if you are a star, it makes sense. Yeah. Is there like a is there like a stair step in what you present? Because you don't want to just do everything at, at I'm sure once, it's a right? Tiered system. Well, she's you know, it's got, like a little nipple. She's got that Italian garbage. I think you run out of stuff frontal. after five days. You're like day one, just gonna, like damn, I'm just gonna show a little one. tit. Day yeah. two, just a little vag, and then day three, it's all of it. And day four, you're like. Yeah. All right, I guess get me a zucchini. <laughs> yeah, yeah, day four, yeah, day five, you're just buying stuff you never even heard of. Yeah. Day six, you're... Giant tentacle. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Day six, you're yeah, looking at the Japanese for answers. <laughs> what are those freaks doing, doing? Is she doing nudes? Because it made it sound like she's just doing, like, risque things like that could go on Instagram. Is that all you have to do? Really? I feel I'm like they... I feel like they're working always... with cheat codes over there. That's not fair. I think people do just like be like I'm. Why would you subscribe? vaguely scantily clad? Why, why would you subscribe to this nonsense? <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little confused, also. Yeah, I thought OnlyFans was because you're undressed. Yeah, not all of them. You gotta be a real chump to pay for the non <laughs> OnlyFans OnlyFans. You know, you can Google. Oh yeah, look at that bra. <laughs> yeah, it's, look yeah, at it'll the be bra panties that. or something, or you know, pulling the sh the shoulder strap down, but not really doing anything. <laughs> What? Shoulder. Oh, have you seen that new credit card information? Her shoulder strap down. <laughs> oh. I must. I must. Are you doing it in the bathroom again? Are you watching the chick from The Sopranos show shoulder? Her shoulder strap down. Please. <laughs> She's showing me some knee. <laughs> 25 years after the show ended, I finally get to see her. Yeah, maybe in Iran, that's what OnlyFans is. Yeah, that's, <laughs> this girl's spread eagle, dude. <laughs> oh, she is? All right, I gotta look it up. Just hoping to see her get hit with rocks. She's reenacting the scene with Vito getting the pool cue up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing themed. <laughs> She's <laughs> it's all Sopranos. It's yeah. all Sopranos. It's all Sopranos. Yeah. Every episode of the way people got whacked but undressed. <laughs> she's a therapist. <laughs> wow, good for her. Yeah, I think she's got to have. It says there's an online backlash. Well, that's shocking. I know some people. I don't think there is that much of an online backlash for the record. Yeah, there, you'd hear more. Who's saying this? I mean, there might be. Online backlash started after they started jamming it down your throat for four months straight. Yeah. The backlash is what we get it. Sopranos girls got her tits out. Yeah. I, she yeah. got splashed on her back. Yes. I oh, I see what I mean. Oh, backsplash. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> this show, so. It's backsplash? Backsplash? Uh, it's when you come on someone's back. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> or when you use the restroom uh, and it splashes up. <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah, we've all been there. It was the name of a band I had. Anyway, um, part of. Uh, Part of that, though, is a lot of people never have had, like, been attacked online, and then they get three bad comments, and they're like, I'm getting some real backlash. And you're like, you're not. Yeah, yeah, they're after like, you. Oh. Yeah, they're not, they're not coming for you, Drea. They're just saying that, you know, you're showing your tits, and that's what you're doing. <laughs> she wrote, I know some people have said some nasty things about me, having joined OnlyFans, but the way we see it in this house is mommy's a warrior. 
Shut <laughs> What? Stop it. God. It's from his hey, son? On. No, 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 no. <laughs> Popping the poo tang out, and you're like, mommy's a warrior. Okay, I'm fighting for you. <laughs> <laughs> they interviewed her son <laughs> for a quote. <laughs> Not accepting defeat. It's, it's good to have the support. I figured, okay, so nobody's in their underwear and being sexy on Instagram, and I don't do that, but I can do that and get paid for it. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. <laughs> so you're right. Okay. She's not she's not getting naked. She's not getting naked, right? She's I don't the think ultimate warrior and that she's only wearing a thong. Yes, she dresses as the wrestler, the ultimate warrior. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> she also yells, I am Spartacus as she rips the shirt off. She wears a lot of tassels. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Man. Okay. Well, good for her. She's a warrior. Yeah. Bang bang. I am the warrior. How much is he charging? One last thing. Fifteen bucks? That's why I think it's not nudes. It's so little. It's 15 little? For OnlyFans? How much do they charge? Uh, yeah. You know, like at, at it's least. 15 per month. Like, yeah, like at bad. least 10 for nobodies. Kind okay. of thing. So if you're doing, if you're a celebrity, you're only doing 15. You're not doing nude shots. Denise Richards is only $7. Whew. Does she do what? nudes? Yeah. Dude, yeah. the amount of people what? that must have been so pissed off signing up for 15 bucks. <laughs> yeah, they probably thought. Looking at her in her nightgown. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, no, I was just going to do Sopranos content. I was explaining what scenes were my favorite, and everyone smashing their computer. We're holding a candlestick and <laughs> calling it a bomb threat at OnlyFans. I'd be pissed. Yeah. Ugh. I think you're onto something, though. It, it Sorry, feel kind say, of like a. Did you say Denise Richards gets undressed for $7 a month? Yeah. 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 <laughs> She does. Is it true? It's 100% true. Oh, man. The vast majority of OnlyFans girls don't make that much. They make, like, nothing. Well, that's it's true. These yeah. massive, it's well, the massive OnlyFans characters like that. OnlyFans takes their cut, too. It's like the pimp. Yeah, yeah. Like YouTube. Yeah, there's a few girls that, like anything, there's a few girls that do well. and But it's cr yeah. definitely crappy to uh, go all in on OnlyFans and be like, have to cross that border and be like, you know, subscribe to my OnlyFans. And then after a month of promoting it, it's your uncle and your cousin. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> going to be tough when you have the same names. Yeah, you realize it's your brother in the room next door. <laughs> so why don't you just drill a hole in a sheet? <laughs> my dad's credit card number. And then, <laughs> all right. Odd. This is to this address. Right. And then you have to just like sort of pretend. And you never did that. Yeah. You make four fake accounts to talk about how sexy you are. The one real account just tells you what a piece of shit you are. That's what happened to Rachel Dolezal. She lost her teaching job. Yeah. I don't under I guess that, ma that makes sense. She's really teaching have children? Yeah, it's not okay. What? No, what she was teaching at a college, I thought. Why? She was teaching African studies. Oh, you're right. She was teaching all oh, African yeah. classes. <laughs> Every single she week. came into class, brother man, brother man, brother man. <laughs> wait, wait a second. Let me tell you something. If any of you guys are interested, <laughs> I have an only cards. <laughs> Pass the cards out. That was the problem. Yeah, yeah. the QR code on the back. As you know, I'm a sister. Yeah, yeah. She's get uh, down. I'm surprised though. At a college, that seems okay. I don't think it was a college. Was it like community college? No, I think she was teaching at a like a school. Was she just forcing those classes? Because they were all African American studies courses. Yeah. I remember that. No, this is after all this. Oh, it was after all that? Yeah, You're probably so right. She's had a lot. She's like Forrest Gump. She's had a lot of careers. She's okay. everywhere. Yes. She, she rose to the top of the Black Power movement to, like in a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Once that crumbled, she rose to the top of the uh, cameo thing. Once she fucking milked that dry, she started taking the clothes off. And then after that, she went into the classrooms, uh, turned the chair around. He's, you don't, you kids don't got to make the same mistakes that I did. <laughs> I think she was doing one of those. The backwards hat. Uh, Sparking a cigarette. Till... <laughs> I think she was doing that kind of teaching. I'll okay, teach you it was city elementary kids. school. It was an elementary school. Yeah, okay. She, oh, yeah, she that. was previously teaching at a college. Yeah, hey, you're right. Okay. Boom. Yeah, she was teaching kids. You're her biggest I, fan. Yeah, <laughs> you know her whole career. Exactly. Waiting for the autobiography to come out. That's next. That's the next hustle. She's for basically sure. just a catch me if you can, except she's a white black woman. <laughs> she's more of a catch me outside if it didn't work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's done well on OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah. That's somebody who they wrote. like their success stories. Yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they really it's put like those comedy. In the a few guys keep keep everyone yeah. going to those uh, coffee shops for the next 14 years exactly. instead of starting their life. Right. Exactly. There's, there's always the guy who you just like, you've been doing that same three jokes for 20 years and you just, what, you don't admit they're not good. 
And you're like, well, yeah, why would I stop when this girl showed her tits and she's $40 million? <laughs> yes, exactly. Somebody wants to see my feet. So here's mine. Oh, God. Oh, oh no. My, oh, my. Oh, my God. Why is that one burned? <laughs> so <laughs> Kurt Cousins got a grill. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota Viking and white guy. <laughs> oh, my God. Got a grill. <laughs> the Minnesota guy. Vikings quarterback shared a photo of his new gold grill. Nice. Uh, it's his front on Instagram, shouting out to Dr. Ryan Lepster, uh, not lobster, for the great <laughs> work. This is an actual picture of his mouth now. The joke, of course, is that Cousins had a long uh, registered as one of the most unlikely NFL players to adorn blingy accessories and admitted uh, dad type, you know, whose values align with his team's Midwestern location. He started rocking the teammates' chains for post-game uh, celebrations, then continued the tradition in 2023. The joke about grills started in the locker room. Uh, you know, you know this fella, you're a football guy. I, do, I don't even know if he's on the Vikings anymore. I, f I feel like they're done with him. Well, they might be. Um, <laughs> apparently, the grill's not done, though. He's going to be adding some bling to it. This is almost like the new version of blackface. It, it really is. Right? Like, what's he doing? Why? He's trying to relate to his other teammates and stuff. Like, I don't, That's got to be the whitest thing to do is to get a grill and be like, hey, fellas. Hey, look at this. Uh, this is my dentist. Peak Steve Martin being a rapper in a movie yes it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah because he usually walks up to games in like a button-down polo shirt and khakis and his wife dresses him to be like the midwestern dad right. type of guy so i guess he's changing his image i don't know well she's not gonna tell me what to do anymore <laughs> yeah, screw her we do have that video the locker room he's got the chain on i saw justin was putting a chain on uh yeah. Kirk cousins how long do you think until he actually gets the grills Kurt? Is that, yeah, is that ever happening? Kurt! Kurt! You think you ever gonna get the grills? I gotta do it. There you go. All right. <laughs> I don't know where, but we get All right. it. All right. Um, I've, everyone talked about the 49ers defense, but Brian Flores' defense. I mean, oh, your, your defense showed up today. His defense showed up today. <laughs> I didn't even see Kurt Cousins in that. But he was off, he's off to the side. He was like, are you gonna get it? He's like, yeah, I gotta get it. It was his boy talking about it. I gotcha. That was, that's why I was lost. That was him. Oh, oh. What? Yeah. I was a little concerned after with the second the surgery. Kind of strange with how far he had taken this is all. <laughs> <laughs> Just showing up as a black guy. <laughs> when uh, the Jets signed Aaron Rodgers, one of the cornerbacks for the team, gave Aaron Rodgers this big gold necklace, flaunty necklace. So the owner of the Jets, Woody Johnson, went out and bought his own. And I think it said like his name, Woody Honor. And he wore it to the first game. Looked ridiculous, this old Johnson & Johnson air guy wearing this gold necklace. And uh, Aaron Rodgers gets hurt in the first four plays, and then he's there at the game with his stupid Aaron Rodgers necklace on. It was like, it just looks bad. I don't. Kirk Cousins is going to – he's never going to wear these again. Oh, no, never. Yeah. He's got money. I mean, he's got the money to kind of throw it out, right? How much does it cost to make a feel like grill? It's, you got to do them custom, right? I paid 2000 Okay. Did anybody here else ever dress like that? No. Hmm? Like thugged out. I don't know. There is a way to do grills that's metal. Yeah. Is there really? Yeah. A lot of like white, uh, uh, dude, like, like white tattooed rock, guys yeah, with yeah. lots of leather stuff wear grills too. Yeah. Like bike. Have you ever done it? Uh, I've had one I've had in, the boil. but I've never had like a real one where you actually had like a... I've had the boil ones for a sketch. Yeah, yeah like the gumball machine. Yeah. Well, I've had them in, and, but I've never had like the real one where it's just metal and they make it around your mouth. Yeah. But I'm not totally against it. I've seen it a couple of times when I'm... Looks so were you punk though, or were you like... Yeah, a little more punk Yeah, punk metal, when you were but... younger, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I was a bunch of things. Yeah, I was more wigger. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, like that's the only way I can put it. I don't want to... Fubu? You bet. Jumpsuits? You bet. Tracksuits. Oh, Matching track shoelaces? You bet. Let me ask you a question. You ever had shoes that matched the stitching in your jeans? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I had 12-inch subwoofers in all my cars. Oh, there you go. Uh, so yeah. much so that they okay. would drain the battery. <laughs> And my friends had cars uh, that were often very crappy, like 1970 Ford Festivas. What kind of headgear are we talking? Uh, we're talking... Full back, hat backwards, oh. forwards with the straight brim? Off to the side? Uh, or? Sometimes off to the side a little bit, 
Old English D. Yep. Mm. Uh, but in 1996, when uh, Mace was uh, coming onto the scene with the powder blue Yankees hats, that's what we were wearing. Have you ever had a shirt with a cartoon character on it? Of course, Bugs and <laughs> Oh yeah, dude. Wearing crisscross. Crisscross? <laughs> dude, I had that poster. Oh yeah. Crisscross poster? I've dressed like a mother. You ever had sex with a woman in just your Tims? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, you don't want to. Ex- you know, it's funny. You want to expose your toes yeah. around the other men. I've had sex with a. Wo- I've actually had sex with a woman in the backseat of a car that had bumps in Timberlands while my face was bleeding. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the whole experience. Yeah, I had uh, all of that and a chain on. Not a huge chain. Yeah, I mean, you I kept was, the chain on. Look, I was. Oh yeah. Well, you, I, it's, it's bumping her in the head. <laughs> yeah. I could, oh yeah. It was. I could only go to Piercing Pagoda and afford silver. But yeah, I did what I could. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I definitely had diamond earrings. I also. Well, I had six earrings at one point, but not like you had spreaders. I remember. Yeah, I had that. spreaders. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but I never had them in when you knew me. No, but I had I, them I years years ago. But yeah. we had a. There was this like jewelry cart at the mall, and it had this huge pendant that said "True to the Game." Yeah, and we convinced. No limit. My- <laughs> Is that what that was? Yes, it was. <laughs> Master P. <laughs> okay, true to the game was yeah. Master P. Well, we didn't know. We used to always just yeah. see it and be like, who the fuck would buy this true to the game? Pen? I'll tell you who. <laughs> Me. <laughs> you have a big true to the game on his back? <laughs> Dude, it was also about it, about it. I knew people. Well, we convinced this uh, kid's mom that that's what he wanted for his birthday. When we, <laughs> We've been like, oh, he didn't want to tell you, but this is his favorite. And then she bought him the oh. true to the game <laughs> Two to the giz, I'm stopped in the projects. So that's Master P. Cocaine. Yeah. Oh, well, he wasn't selling much of the Pickering Town Center. No. I guarantee you that had been sitting there for what year was this? Got Buddy, dust on it. Uh, I don't know, 20 years ago. Oh, yeah. It'd probably been sitting there more, for more than 20 yeah, years ago. At least five by the time. It came with the cart, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, I guarantee you it had been sitting there forever. <laughs> True was popular, maybe for like a year and a half, and they made a lot of jewelry because every single CD case for No Limit was just written in that jewelry. Yeah, that was the fun for remember a that? minute. Master P yeah, yeah. That was the free album. That. Silk the Shocker. It was all just diamonds. <laughs> I'm, yeah, that that font stormed the demo industry of the rap. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was everything. The yeah. amount of people at Times Square handing out photos with them. It's yeah, like the drill Malibu's, font. <laughs> Malibu's most wanted. Real font. It's just like that. Yeah. Even Snoop Dogg, when he did the Dog Father album, it was yeah. that. He, yeah. he when he yeah. went to No Limit for five minutes and made by far his worst album. It was, it was that font of just Snoop Dogg. The uh, or not the Dog Father. That one was was it the Dog Father? I think it was the Dog Father. But yeah, it was the No Limit album that he did. Do you remember that one? I'm not a big Snoop aficionado, quite the opposite. But Master P had the worst dance out of all the guys. Oh, yeah. Because that was the era where everyone, like, if you're a rapper, you also, like, had to have a dance that was your signature dance, and his was just that. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, and he also had a movie where they... St- <laughs> that really seems like, they're like, you need a dance. And he's like, what about this? They're like, okay, but seriously, we're going to need a dance. He was like, no, this is what I was coming... This- I, I, I like, came up with all this all night. Have you met my son, little Romeo? <laughs> okay, bro. He you- came back into the record studio. He goes, I've been up all night. I think I cracked it. I got it. I He had a, a movie called Bout It, and then he had another movie <laughs> called I Got the Hookup, where they sold, I believe it was either cell phones or pagers on the street. <laughs> Right to Nickelodeon. That was a good era. Right Dude, it was the best era for rap because that was like at the same. You didn't time. skateboard. You were like a rap guy. No, my friend skateboarded. Okay, I, rap. I, you were like rap skateboarder. Well, yeah, I totally posed with skateboarding. Like okay. I couldn't do it, <laughs> but I totally owned a skateboard that I fell off of a yeah. lot. Yeah, I had a, a World Industries uh, Cheech and Chong board. Do you mm-hmm. wear the the Van skate? Deck shoes. No, we we wore. Uh, no, he wore the shoes that have the the metal in the middle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Uh, we wore a lot of DCs actually. I like DCs. The as well, crossover yeah. of. Oh, so it was like a limb biscuit vibe. I'm trying to get. Oh a no no no! We you. hate uh, not a limb. Oh, oh, oh come on, come on! Was it insane clown posse? No no, I did meet Violent J though the other night I at saw Rogan's. That. That was cool. That was saw cool. that very cool. Yeah, insane yeah. clown posse, sick, and yeah, I will yeah. not have them smoking ill about while I'm on the show. Yeah, no, I I actually I, I'm I'm from the D. I, I like them. That's what oh, I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not, you In the show my interview. Clown room shirt too, and, and I wore the clown room shirt, so it was just Perfect. a happy coincidence. Um, and I I interviewed Isham once, who I really like, and he's he tours with them, and I guess they used to record like two blocks from my house at this place next to another place called Bogies, where I bought records, and it's where uh, Isham would record his music. Coincidence, weird. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. 
But uh, yeah, no, were you a skater? I was, I'm kind of more of like musician as my identity, but yeah, I okay. skateboarded. I did, I did all of the things that one would do in the suburbs. Yeah, that's what. Like, I, I don't think there was yes. one trend that I skipped. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Like, it depended next, on what we were next. doing. Like, you know, there was at one point where I just dressed very nice because I wanted to be kind of gangster looking, mm. like an Italian. That my Italian half polo, long oh, polo. Yeah, yeah, like that sort of thing. You know, and that was more when I was uh, going out shirt. Where, yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, where I wore like those black Kenneth Coles that had a buckle on them, where for because for some reason Pilgrim shoes were popular <laughs> in the very late nineties. <laughs> It just, were they? Yeah. Well, yeah, at least, I, yeah, I, yeah. They really were. I don't know why. There's no reason. You're gonna look nice. Put, gonna put a nice buckle on your silvers. Shoes. Look at that. <laughs> Did you ever have a hardcore nice. phase where you wore like the Jenkos and the wallet chains and the? I, yeah, like I, studded belts and stuff. No, I, I can picture you I with some uh, glow sticks around your neck. No, I went to a ton of raves and was a giant druggie, but um, nice. I was still I, I wore very baggy pants. Um, never, never Janko, straight up Jankos, <laughs> okay. but I wore very, very baggy pants and went to a lot of raves and electronic festivals. The place we've talked about that, the firehouse in downtown Detroit, which was an abandoned firehouse. Uh, I mean, everything's every firehouse. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. As, as opposed to, you know, the many functional ones that would always put out the fires. Yeah. <laughs> the abandoned firehouse next to the abandoned police station and the abandoned city hall and the, the abandoned, abandoned houses. <laughs> Yeah, the that those places. Um, yeah, we would go in hospital raves all the time. So yeah, it was. I was definitely one of those kids. But I, my friends did tons of ecstasy, and I didn't like it as much as them. Mm. I, I really you just did it to be, yeah. Yeah, it was too. It just well, you put in a, a pacifier, and your friends are dancing around with glow sticks. <laughs> like you just pay all this money to be a gay baby, and you looked at <laughs> <laughs> like your friends are like, I'll just. Miss I'll just massage you. That's not gay, right? <laughs> like a, your friend's girlfriend would like touch your knee and you're like, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> and then they'd want to do dumb stuff. Like, trust me, man, put some Vicks Vapor up on your eyes and then you do it and you're like, this just burned. Why is this fun for any of you? How old were you at this point? 17. 16. Okay. Okay. 28. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you mean last Wednesday? <laughs> I remember one time my blood temperature dropped so bad and I, I had like turned blue and I was shaking because God knows what was in those pills then. And I was still rolling pretty hard, so they're like, I don't know what to do. And like, this guy just gave me a fur coat. So I'm just walking around this rave looking like a pimp, just like <laughs> shaking in the middle of the street. <laughs> did you do a lot of E or any of that stuff? Yes. Then? No, I wasn't a big. I did MDMA here and there, but never okay. really like took hold of me the way it did for you. <laughs> yeah, this is like. I did, I did. <laughs> I'd like to say this, this was, is me now. <laughs> <laughs> this is no, I, I just went with whatever trend is. Uh, I was too busy crushing sniz. Mm -mm. <laughs> that wasn't a problem. That was my drug. <laughs> no, oddly enough, I I wasn't bad at that. I was being ironic, but no, I'm but glad to know that you're such no. a hound. No, not I. I was uh, monogamous, but I wasn't shockingly bad at that because <laughs> if you give them drugs, they come to you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're funny. That helps. And you're funny. Yeah, I would have thought you'd be fine with chicks, but and you were the bad boy back then. Yeah, you were the bad boy. The rave scene is a, that was one of, if you look back at all of the like trends the teenagers go through, the pacifier, Cat Big the G, that's Up the hats. funniest yeah. gimmick. It was the dumbest scene ever. Like you would just have your friend show up to your house and everybody's standing there, some in Jenko jeans and everything. Did you do the stuff? Like the. Yeah. Yeah, the oh, I can't dance. But did, did you do any of the? <laughs> I don't think that qualifies as dancing. Yeah. Well, it's like white people dance. I would watch other people do it. I didn't really like dancing. I like cigarettes, so I would sit there and just be like, I can't get enough of these because I would already <laughs> smoke three packs a day. And but the girls were like, "Damn, he's cool. Look at him." Yeah, that guy he's not even dancing. Club. I would pull up to a house in a. The in music's a, not even taking over his body. Look yeah, at that yeah. loser. Well, dude, I'd have like a '95 Mustang Cobra, and I'd pull up to your house and honk, and the and their dad, the girls' dads would be like, "What?" the fuck <laughs> like it was the worst person <laughs> it's just i'm in this the driveway guy. with like a cigarette in my mouth <laughs> backwards hats <laughs> it's like i could it'd be the worst thing to ever send your daughter out with sounds pretty cool though and they'd be like could you come to the door my dad hates you vanity license plate too fly <laughs> <laughs> too legit to quit <laughs> this is too short <laughs> No, I was a uh, rave, rave KNG. <laughs> rave Dave. <laughs> rave Dave. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I didn't glow sticks. Yeah. S T Y K. <laughs> Did you do raves? 
I only went to uh, the tunnel once, which is a club in the city. At some okay. point, it got shut down. Yeah, I did like ecstasy with friends a couple of times, but yeah, never really clubs. But I've done a bunch of mushrooms and acid and stuff in concerts, but not raves. Yeah, because you like that. You like hallucinogenics. I, I mean, I like them, but I'm not like, you know, <laughs> once every two years kind of thing. Okay. It's not your whole lifestyle. We, I was yeah. actually, yeah. I'm not yeah. microdosing every yeah. day and you know, think they have great benefits or anything like that. Seems more, as I get older, they're less and less fun, actually. Well, yeah, because you have to deal with reality. Yes. Mm. It's, when you have bills. You don't have four days to recover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you have responsibilities and bills, it's not really fun to see a wall drip. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? Do you like that stuff? No, nah, I was like a classic, like picture, like a band guy in high school. That was me. You was know you? what I mean? Like the you vintage that, guy yeah. where we would get in, if the, the rave kids, you'd, you'd run into them in the hallway and then you'd have to <laughs> square off. <laughs> you know, like, hey, it's glow stick. Like, and they go, hey, it's drumsticks. And then you, <laughs> yeah, and then you'd have a battle. <laughs> yeah. I also was, sorry, I should have said my high school was a musical high school too. So, did you really? Yeah. So we'd, no. <laughs> we'd break well obviously once the fight started we break into choreograph I'm very gullible right now I had a, I didn't sleep well I, I really bought the believe anything my what are you guys doing in the band snatched. corner rave kids oh. Dave I've got a sheet take your jinko jeans and skedaddle <laughs> Man, That's why I just took everything you said at face value in the last couple things. <laughs> but there are people that do go to those high, those schools, though. I guess it's just because my kids in school now, and then some kids will have you like gifted, so they end up going mm -hmm. to school just for that particular art. Yeah, I guess uh, they do have uh, people. There was a couple. I don't know why I looked Toronto. at you though and assumed that you were you went to a musical high school <laughs> with drumstick kids. Those are hilarious, though, the kids that did go to those schools once they had to exit that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because, like, th there are some schools where it legitimately is like a drama class, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's all you have. And you're like, he was the cool kid in drama class. Like, what does that mean? He'll chew gum. Yeah, yeah he doesn't <laughs> care. He brings his own soda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a rough life. Drama kid? Yeah, mm. I didn't. I I wanted to always take. This is a weird. It is just a weird did. mix because you're like it's generally you have rich parents. They send you to this school so you can go to learn how to not make any money. Yeah, and then yeah, then you go to maybe Juilliard, and then you don't make any money either. It's a weird pipeline. Yeah, it's not good. Like, and then if you're very, very, very lucky, you'll make thirty grand plus a year. Yeah, very lucky. Like out of the hundred kids. You're all very special, except we're only going to take two of you. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny living in New York too, because you see, you kind of like meet people. You're like, oh yeah, he's in, uh, you know, what is the musical that's playing? Wicked. You know what I mean? Yeah. You'll meet someone. Yeah. They're like, oh, they're one of the main people in Wicked, and they're just kind of like around. And you're like, if I was a kid, if I was, if you heard, you're like, oh, he's the main guy in like the Broadway in New York. You're like, oh, I guess that's a billionaire, probably. Right. Yeah. You're like, yeah. <laughs> Loaded. <laughs> yeah. Now you're just like, oh, you know, that guy. Like, yeah. You're like, part time job. Yeah. He's got an only <laughs> the, like top of the top. No I'm sure they do fine, but yeah, but he's just wearing a scarf and an old jacket and smoking in the back. Like that's <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's really who he is. It's never yeah, it never seems that impressive. It always they always seem broken and then they're very defensive about whatever they I think like New York seems like a big deal when you're not from there too. You're just oh. Like, oh, they moved to New York and they're like working as like a actor. You're like, wow, Broadway? You're like they know they do like an audition once twice <laughs> Broadway? No, what? Starbucks. Yeah. And <laughs> Did you want to, do you know of a place that might be hiring an actor? <laughs> yeah, we were loving the idea. Me and Danny were talking about this, but the, uh, there was, there's like a degree in magic, but it's like decolonization of magic. And we were loving it. They're going to learn how to decolonize a coffee filter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a decolonize a cup of Joe. <laughs> That's kind of, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's got to be a terror. I just don't know why you, yeah, you have to move to the most expensive cities on earth to have a failed dream. I mean, it's worse if you don't, you know? At least that guy's, like, in the game. You hear the yeah. guy that, I don't know, lives in San Diego, and he's still pursuing this musical dream. He's, yeah. like, he's in the local San Diego musical. Yeah, like, well, how's that going? Yeah, like, maybe better. I don't know, maybe that guy's doing fine. Maybe he's yeah. happy. That guy's a mansion. <laughs> now we're outside of the city. I don't know. Ugh. I guess dreams aren't meant. Then some idiots do comedy. <laughs> I know, right? And then even when you make it, it feels not good. <laughs> anyway. 
You know what the difference is? There is, I'll tell you the, the, if I was to defend the comedy on that, the, when you think of like the dream of being a comedian, it's already seedy even in your dream. Like there, it's not glamorous, right? So if you're like, oh, I want to be this thing, the kind of thing you picture is seedy. You know, mm. you're in dingy places. You're not really picturing, you know, playing the arenas. That's not really like what you think of. Oh. Whereas I think that it's a lot less glamorous being like a Broadway musical than you think it would be. Right. Oh yeah. Once you see it, it's it's surprising. When you see an when you see a comic in an arena, it's shocking because yeah, yeah, you yeah. never expected that. Yeah. So when you get, you're just like on the road in these crappy old places, and you're like, I guess technically you are living the dream because that is what you want to do. That's it, that's it. And when you when at least you know, I think for people, what's the goal? Age, I guess. Yeah. You grew up watching specials and like ha you know half hour comedy hours and all that stuff shot in clubs. Yeah. That's all you thought it was was yeah. comedy club comedy. That's all everything. You know, the idea of comics doing an arena is still baffling. Like even doing like 3,000 seats and it's just baffling. And it's like, I've done it and it's still like, are you, am I connected? What'd you do you? it with? I've done, uh, I've done them with a lot of people. The biggest I ever did was 7,000 with Chappelle. Cool. And that one's like, but it's like, you can't not kill. Because mm. if, if a third of them enjoy you, it sounds pretty good. Uh. You got no. the energy of the room, at least. Yeah, it's a massive... Well, I heard everyone else killed that night. Yeah, it was just... It was mostly everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I heard everyone crushed. It's funny. I was talking to the other people on the show. They said they crushed. Oh, yeah? I I, I mean, I ate shit. What, uh, <laughs> what's your biggest group? What's your biggest crowd? Mm, maybe, like, 2,000. I've never done a ton of big opening ones, so probably my biggest ones are just ones that I did. Well, you brag. Yeah. Well, that's the opposite of a brag. No one's ever asked me. <laughs> I mean, no one in Canada sells numbers like that, and I haven't been here for that long. I just Russell Peters. Is he in Canada? Yeah, well, he never asked me. I and most people don't ask me anymore. <laughs> I went on compound. I did a couple, you know, call I did call you know, call and just. I did a couple of his, but he's only doing like fifteen hundred. Wasn't that crazy? I imagine he's done well though. Yeah, but I'm sure he could do more, yeah. but I've done I was doing Tom. I did Tom Green's tour. I did Steve O's tour. He's super again, those nice. were all like fifteen hundred. You know. Yeah, I can see that. Tom Green's super nice. I just met. I've him. Never done one of these seven thousand seaters you speak of. I don't think Chappelle does them anymore. This was in the height of his fame. This was like two thousand four or five. Mm. Well, I shouldn't say height of his fame, but height of his Chappelle. Oh, him and Rogan fame. just did an arena tour. Oh, did they really? Yeah. Damn. Wow. I would imagine that's got to be packed. I threw out uh, anyway. T-shirts to a sold-out Madison Square Garden when uh, Dice was there in, like, 99 or something. Really? Because Opie and Anthony helped them sell tickets, so they got to intro him or do something on stage, and I got to go out there on stage. And it's just insane when 15, 12,000 people or whatever are going crazy. Yeah. How do you like, connect to that? Like, It was like a blur. You couldn't so pick many out anyone. It was just a sound. And, you know... Uh, yeah, I grew up in New York. MSG is like, oh my God, I'm on this stage. Try to soak in this moment. And it's just, it doesn't soak in. And you just start throwing t-shirts and <laughs> you know what happened. I more remember smoking weed with two strippers in backstage in the bathroom. <laughs> That's like the memory that stuck in my head. I can't, I have no idea what happened on that stage now. That is a better memory than throwing t-shirts at people. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> what is that seat? I... It's got to be Madison. Nuts. I think it's, a, it's, it's a such a cool venue. 15, 12 or 15. But, you know, when they do comedy, they don't sell behind this, the stage and stuff like that. So yeah. I don't know how many it was for Dice. That's crazy, though. Hinge Didn't they do like a 360 for like Dane Cook did Madison Square Garden? It was like all the way around. Really? Is that Full Circle or whatever that name? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Huh. It was like specialty. Like capacity is 19,000. Wow, that's nuts. Wow. Well. Fucking huge. You won't be able to see me there, but check out DaveLandau.com. <laughs> also, you can check out Mr. Ryan Long. Funny Bones. Yeah. I do some of those. You do those? I've known to do a funny bone or two. Hey, look at that. I prefer it, personally. They said Madison Square Gardens was on the table, and I said, you know what? <laughs> yeah. I'm a company man. <laughs> I, uh, I enjoy a chain, thank you. <laughs> I've got loyalty. I want to work at the Fridays of... Uh, I should insult them. I love you guys. I do, I, you guys are good to me. What's the Fridays? With the Fridays. Oh. TGI Fridays. Oh, Fridays is good to me. I meant 
Yes. They, <laughs> they give me free appetizers because <laughs> I eat them so much. Are they still around? Yeah. Yeah. I think Did you go a lot? Yeah, I used to. You go to Fridays a lot? What do you get? Uh, like potato skins. Oh. oh. Well, shit. All right. <laughs> Let's go to the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Biden's doctor released the results of his annual exam and said he found no signs of trouble. Okay. Obviously, his doctor is fake. So who do you think his doctor was? QB. Seuss. Fair enough. Angela. William H. Cosby. Well played. Ryan. The man's in good health. I, I'm not going to sit here while we try to trash. <laughs> I, I don't know if you know. The, the, the results came out. The man's in perfect health. And if we want to besmirch right. a... Good for you. Yeah, I actually heard he ran a marathon yesterday. Well. My doctor told me that. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Phil. <laughs> uh, the fake, the fakest doctor of all, Dr. Bill. Bill. Dr. Jill Biden. Uh, uh, of course. Great doctor. <laughs> Silly doctor. I'm going to say Mitch McConnell. <laughs> Didn't he just step down? Yeah. Uh, did he? I think they, turtle, we, they wheeled him down. down. Did he? Did, did <laughs> his, down. You sure his brain didn't just stop? Yeah. And he froze, froze again. again. That was the best, though, when two weeks ago when the Biden thing came out and there, it was like the bombshell that uh, some his memory night might not be that great. <laughs> like, yeah. I guess the secret's out. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm so glad they can admit that. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, everybody. See you next Tuesday. Good night. <laughs>